Oh, well, what's happening, everyone? Welcome on back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you stopping in, coming on through wherever you are, wherever you're tuning in from. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and continue on, White Album. We're going to take the next two tracks together. Let's just, hey, why not? Let's just take the next two here. They're relatively short. Honey Pie and Savoy Truffle. You know what was funny? I, um, my wife sometimes buys like those, those nicely scented soaps, like hand soaps that you have in the bathroom and such. And the one that we have now, actually, you know what? Let me show you what, you, you, let's make this a little bit interactive, huh? The one that we have now is, is right here. It's milk and honey. I guess I, I hopefully it, it focuses on there. It's milk and honey. And I got to tell you, when you wash your hands with it, it, it makes me like hungry. For like a sweet biscuit or something. <laughs> but I would not risk making a pie out of that. Let's go ahead and listen to this track first. And then we will talk about it after. Will I let these two go together? I might. Decides on what, you know, depends on what I decide to do. But for now, let's go ahead and give it a listen. We'll talk about it after. Let's, hold on, I gotta find it. 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 There. there you go. Let's go. Honey pie. She was a working girl You are making me crazy I'm in love but I'm lazy Come back to me Will the wind that blew her boat You know, I I'm really loving the eclecticism of this album. Like right here, right? Another at this late in the album, at this point, we're still going off and doing a bunch of different styles of music. So <laughs> this is like that, I, I don't even know the like genre or like what would you describe it as, but that very old, like you can see it, black and white, people are dressed up on the stage. There's some tap dancing in there. It's not in this track. And you know what? I wouldn't put it past the Beatles to include some sort of tap dancing in there, but you can hear those little like moments where there would be some tap dancing, which I think is like, it just puts that imagery in my mind. Once again, I don't know what like the genre of music is, but it's that very old, you know, there's two, I don't know, two people dancing on the stage. They have suits and tuxedos, top hats. They got their little cane and they're like, da, 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 like that kind of sound. I don't know. I don't know what kind of, kind of genre that is, but they captured it here. And it still has that charm, right? If you're going to emulate and bring back a style from a certain era, you got to bring it into your own fold. You have to give it your own personality, your own characteristics, what the Beatles do. But then you have to, like, still pay homage to that style. I think they do a great job here because I can see them. I can see uh, I, I can see McCartney in a top hat and in a tuxedo and doing this thing. What's that? Hey, there's a cat right there. Okay, there's a cat outside just strolling by. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, sorry. That distracted me. I saw some movement outside. Um, Ringo perfectly captures the, the space of the drums and everything. Like, everyone does a great job in there. But... It's really McCartney in the singing, just the style, the production even, plays a great hand because it actually sounds like that older style of production. Uh, then you have George Martin on saxophone and clarinet arrangements and Harry Klein, which I gotta be honest, at, for a moment I thought it may have been Mellotron kind of emulating some of that back there, but obviously I would be wrong on that. Lyrics are pretty straightforward on this one. She was a working girl north of England way, now she's hit the big time in the USA. And if she could only hear me, this is what I'd say. Honey pie, you're making me crazy. I'm in love, but I'm lazy, so won't you please come home? I ain't coming to you, but I sure would you like would like you to come to me. <laughs> you became a legend of the silver screen, and now you the thought of meeting you makes me weak in the knee. Like she has she has gained so much notoriety and fame that she is now beyond him, uh, now above him, out of his sphere. I like this kind of hot this hot hold on i like this kind of hot kind of music hot kind of music play it to me play it to me hollywood blues will the wind that blew her boat across the sea kindly send her sailing back to me mm -mm -mm. it says that this track was written entirely by paul mccartney it is a direct homage to the british music hall style okay so i guess that's what it is uh it concerns a famed actress only be only known by the term of endearment honey pie blah 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 we read that part uh, it says here, recording-wise, only one take was recorded on the first day, although it is likely that a number of rehearsal attempts had previously been recorded and wiped. <laughs> They're gone, but we got this one here. Let's go ahead and listen to the next track here on the album. Hold on, let me pull it back up, which is going to be Savoy Truffle. Let's go ahead and let it rock.
That's that tasty psychedelic. I'm feeling pretty good. How are you guys feeling? <laughs> okay. I love how how sizzling and scorching that guitar is in there, right? Uh, on here, you're going to have George Harrison who's going to be playing the lead guitars, the rhythm guitars, the acoustic guitar. He's playing all that. And then you have the organ that comes in as well. This one definitely leans further into more of a psychedelic rock approach, especially with the feeling of that organ. Uh, but it's really those scratchy guitars. I love the part where it's going... Dun, dun, wah, dun, dun, wah, dun, like shifting between like the heavier chords, I, I guess at the top, and then like the wah, like that more screechy kind of sound. I love that back and forth there. It just feels so exciting, especially when the tambourine comes in and the rest of the music's uh, pushing through. You have the horn section, which just adds kind of more into this chaotic little moment here. It's just a joyful, psychedelic song. And the lyrics are like so tasty. <laughs> Cream tangerine in Montlimar, a ginger sling with a pineapple heart, coffee dessert. Yes, you know it's good news, but you'll have to have them all pulled out after the Savoy truffle. I'm assuming this is like talking about like you'll have to have all your teeth pulled out after all the sweets you're having. Cool cherry cream, nice apple tart. I feel your taste all the time we're apart. Coconut fudge really blows down those blues, but you'll have to have them all pulled out after the Savoy truffle. <laughs> Now, I don't know if this is literally about like desserts and sweets or if it could be representing something else and what this Savoy truffle might mean. You might not feel it now, but when the pain cuts through, you're going to know and how the sweat is going to fill your head when it becomes too much, you'll shout aloud. Uh, and I'd love the reference back to Obla Di Obli Da, uh, but can you show me where you are? You'll have to have them all pulled out. Let's look at this particular track, see what the info leads us to. On here, it was written by George Harrison, inspired by Eric Clapton's fondness for chocolate. Uh, the lyrics list the various flavors offered in Macintosh's Good News Chocolates and serve as a warning to Clapton about the detrimental effect that his gorging will have on his teeth. So it is literally just about, hey, you keep on eating sweets. This is what's going to happen. Honestly, great cautionary tale. Dentists love it. The Beatles recorded Savoy Truffle in 1968 towards the end of the five-month sessions. Uh, an upbeat rock track in the soul genre. The song reflects Harrison's returns to the guitar as his main instrument after uh, studying the Indian sitar. Uh, the song on release was viewed by many commentators as a sign of Harrison's growing maturity as a songwriter. Ian McDonald cited it as an example of the lesser material found on the Beatles, while Daryl Easley of BBC Music describes it as one of the doodles that delight and a fine counterweight to While My Guitar Gently Weeps. This is kind of interesting. Ella Fitzgerald have also recorded that's the song. Huh! That's actually really interesting that Ella Fitzgerald has covered this particular track. I think that's really cool. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought, though, in the comments down below. You can follow me over on Twitter. You can support the channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for being here. Please enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys later. Bye.